One of their picture books would no doubt show the two lost children wandering in a maze of anthropomorphic tree limbs. The familiar crow swoops down upon the trail they leave before, tolerant of the errors of their ways. Hand in hand they stumbled onto the story, bright-eyed with beginning of fever, scared half to death, yet never for a moment doubting the outcome that had been prepared. Long in advance, a girl saves brother from oven. Appalling witch dies in appropriate torment. Her hoarded treasure buys them their parents' love, as happy an ending as any fable can provide, squawked the crow, who had expected more delicate morsels from the witch's table. It's an old story. In the modern version, the random children fall into random terror. You see it nightly on the television. Cameras focus on the lop-eared bear beside the plastic ukulele, shattered in a fit of rage. The lost children are found in the first place we now think to look under the fallen leaves, under the scattered pages of lost children's picture books. But if we leave terror waiting in the rain for the wrong bus, or if we have terror find at the very last moment the right train, only to get off at the wrong station, if we for once imagine a happy ending, which is, as always, a continuation, it is because the happy ending's a necessity. It is just a sentimental ploy. Without the happy ending, there would be no one to tell the story to but the witch, and the story is clearly meant for the girls and boys, just now about the set into her kitchen.